Welcome to New Possibilities. I speak truth to power without fear. So I tried to do a live stream a couple of minutes ago, but I had some technical difficulties. So I'm going to do this pre-recorded video. I apologize for the technical difficulties, but let's press ahead. So basically, uh, earlier today and yesterday, I saw this video of this sports announcer by the name of Marsalis Wiley, basically dissing Colin Kaepernick, questioning Colin Kaepernick's blackness. And this guy, at the same time, while he was attacking Colin Kaepernick and his wife, he defended Jay-Z. So I'm going to talk about this whole thing. I'm going to revisit the subject of Jay-Z and this NFL deal and all that kind of stuff, go into a little bit more detail about my thoughts. So basically this guy um, said that from day one, he was against Colin Kaepernick's kneeling, doing the playing of the national anthem. He was against the whole protest, but he didn't speak out on it. He didn't say anything about it. And... Um, you know, and he basically talked about how Jay-Z supported uh, Colin Kaepernick at first and all that kind of stuff. And then this guy basically said that it needs to go beyond kneeling. You know, that kneeling basically is not enough to address the real concerns in the black community, dealing with police brutality and all that kind of stuff. And he said that basically you need somebody that will be able to translate that movement and um, materialize the movement and monetize the movement. And he basically said that that's not what Colin Kaepernick has done. And he went on to talk about how the movement has a lost identity. And he talked about how those people who are actually leading the movement have their identity in question. And basically he was questioning Colin Kaepernick's blackness. He said that Colin Kaepernick never felt the weight of these injustices, you know, of the injustices that he complains about, like police brutality and racial profiling, you know, because he went on to say that Colin Kaepernick is a person of mixed race, you know, a person raised by a white family. So basically he was suggesting that somehow Colin Kaepernick doesn't have a clue about the black experience. He didn't live the black experience. And he was basically suggesting that somebody like Colin Kaepernick is not fit to be a leader of any kind of social justice movement dealing with the plight of African American people. And then he went on to uh, basically try to backtrack on that a little bit by saying, well, Colin Kaepernick can speak on these issues or whatever. But he said that when Colin Kaepernick makes these missteps, he feels the need to raise this whole question of identity. And then he went on to talk about how, um, Colin Kaepernick never spoke out during the height of the Black Lives Matter movement. He said that Colin Kaepernick was silent. Also, this guy went on to say that um, Colin Kaepernick's wife is not even black. From what I understand, she's Egyptian. And I don't know if she's an Arab or, um, you know, I know that she's very light complexioned and all that kind of stuff. But he basically said, well, she's not black and she's not even in any kind of position to be some kind of leader on any kind of black issues. Um, and he said both of them, you know, both of those people, Colin Kaepernick and his wife, don't feel the weight of the consequences of this movement, you know, of, of the whole injustice against black people. And then this guy went on to talk about how he was from New York. He's a black man and blah, blah, blah. He knows about the experience of being racially profiled and harassed by the police. And then he also talked about how Jay-Z knows about that experience as well as a black man from the projects. And then basically he was fanboying, um, Jay-Z by talking about how Jay-Z is so smart and clever for somebody to go from the projects to becoming, you know, a billionaire and, a, you know, wise businessman and all that kind of stuff. That's a testament to how intelligent he is. Now, so what I want to do is just provide my brief response to this whole thing. You know, first of all, you know, I'll say this, like, the fact that somebody is of mixed race or biracial, to me, that's completely irrelevant. That doesn't determine whether or not they can commit to the struggle 
or whether or not they are justified or qualified to lead a movement. That doesn't say anything about that. You know, somebody being lighter complexioned or being biracial, that doesn't disqualify them from leadership. And I frankly think that that's an ignorant type of position to take, to, to measure somebody's commitment to the struggle or somebody's blackness by using a, a brown paper bag test, a reverse of the brown paper bag test for leadership, I think that that's absurd and it's, it's repugnant. Um, we, we have a history of many biracial people who have been prominent in the movement for African liberation. Many people who are fair-skinned who have been prominent in the movement for black liberation. And I think that it is ridiculous and absurd for somebody to try to disqualify someone from leadership based on the fact that they are of mixed heritage or because they are lighter than uh, other people or because they're biracial. I think that that's ridiculous, especially when you have examples of people who are of mixed race that have contributed greatly to our struggle. You have people like a Walter White of, you know, one of the early NAACP leaders who, who did great things. You have people like a W.E.B. Du Bois, a lighter skinned black man, one of the greatest intellectuals in the black community and in, throughout black history. You have people like, I mean, many examples of lighter skinned black people. You have even the brother Malcolm X, whose grandmother, whose mother, rather, his mother, his mother was biracial. A product of rape or whatever. Biracial. So this brother was part white to a degree, a lighter skinned brother. So, you know, I just think that it's absurd to like measure whether or not somebody is capable of leadership based on their complexion. You know, I just think that's ridiculous, man, because there are plenty of examples of people who have been down for the cause and the struggle who are light skinned or biracial and people who are even white that have been a part of the struggle. So I think that it is crazy to try to rule people out based on how dark they are. You know, that's no that's almost as bad as people uh praising lighter skinned people over darker skinned people. And the fact of the matter is, complexion alone is not no determinant of whether or not somebody is committed to the people. You know, there are plenty of people who are dark skinned, for instance, who have completely sold out the black community. People like a Clarence Thomas, a man who used his education, who used his position of power, who continues to use his position of power and use his education to undermine the struggle of black people, doing everything he can to undermine our struggle. Every single important civil rights case that comes before that, that Uncle Ruckus, that Uncle Tom, he's ruling against black people. Whether we're talking about the Voting Rights Act, helping to strike down the uh, and gut key provisions of the Voting Rights Act. That's what that Uncle Ruckus, Clarence Thomas did. A dark-skinned man. And then all you have to do is look here on YouTube how you have dark-skinned men being the first ones in line. And I'm not talking about all or most. I'm talking about a few people on here who happen to be dark-skinned who are the most self-hating Negroes on YouTube who say some of the most derogatory things about black people and black women in particular. These are dark-skinned men making these kind of statements. Dark-skinned men defending police brutality, making excuses for uh, police killing people and all that kind of stuff. So it's not about how dark somebody is. You know, again, you know, this is not the time for us to use a reverse brown paper bag for black leadership. You know, going by that standard, people would rule out a Farrakhan saying, well, he's not black enough to speak on black issues. Or rule out a Malcolm X, rule out a W.E.B. Du Bois and all these other great people, rule out a Angela Davis because they're not dark enough. That's crazy. That's ridiculous. And you got some of these, these, uh, <laughs> for lack of a better word, like, quote unquote, black identity extremists who have hatred 
towards biracial people. And I think that that's misplaced. All that is is divide and conquer strategies that benefit no one but our enemies. So um, the other thing I want to address is, um, you know, I'll briefly address, you know, this guy talking about like, um, you know, the brother Colin Kaepernick's wife not being African-American and stuff like that. Just because she's not African-American, that doesn't mean that she can't speak on police brutality. You know, white people can speak on police brutality. You know, people that are down for the cause and understand and sympathize with the plight of black people can speak on these issues and be involved and engaged in the struggle. So the fact that she's not an African-American is irrelevant. She has every right to speak out on police brutality issues, and we should. If we are tr truly about trying to make a difference, we should want as many allies as possible to organize against this systematic problem of police brutality. That's what we need to do. So, you know, those are some points that I wanted to make. Um, another thing is this. This guy is making all these statements questioning the blackness of, you know, the brother Colin Kaepernick and his wife and all that kind of stuff. This guy is a dark-skinned man, but he finds himself in a position where he's speaking out against a movement that is demanding justice for victims of police brutality. Again, another example of somebody cooning and tomming and shucking and jiving. That's all this is. You know, some of these people are so impressed with money, so impressed with prestige and all that kind of stuff, so impressed with Jay-Z's wealth and all that kind of stuff, it's like they are hypnotized. Now, without a doubt, the brother Jay-Z has done great things, without a doubt, like in terms of social justice and all that kind of stuff. I give him credit for that. I've done videos shouting him out for the great things that he has done. But those great things will not cause me to turn a blind eye to this injustice that's going on right now the way he threw the brother Colin Kaepernick under the bus in order to get a few coins, a few pennies from the NFL. They used this guy, just like the guy, the brother Irv Gotti said, they used this brother Jay-Z like a pawn to add legitimacy to what they're doing, to try to end the boycott against the NFL. That's what they're using this guy for. They're using him for that. Now, there was talk about him possibly getting an interest in a team, like purchasing an interest in one of these NFL teams. And now that's in question. Like, you know, I've seen conflicting reports about that. But people think, well, all of a sudden, because he has this interest in a team, he's going to pick up Colin Kaepernick and make everything okay. Well, if he really had that kind of strength and all that kind of power, why didn't he just bring Colin Kaepernick on board, get him involved into this uh, so-called social justice programs of the NFL? Why didn't he do that? Because it's obviously not about that. It's not about social justice. It's about money at the end of the day. And that's one of the shortcomings with capitalism, black capitalism. Like people always talk all this pro-black capitalism rhetoric not realizing that black capitalism is not a collectivist solution for the plight of our people. Black ca capitalism is about the individual, the individual doing whatever is necessary to maximize his individual profit. That's what black capitalism is about. Many of these black capitalists, they will throw black people under the bus in a second to make a buck. You know, you got some of these people investing into prisons, investing in the, in the mass incarceration of black people. That's your black capitalism for you. Now, this whole point about Colin Kaepernick not um, being involved in the Black Lives Matter movement early on. I understand that point, but I think that that's a weak point. It doesn't matter when he got involved. The fact, the thing that matters is that he got involved. That's what matters. That the brother woke up and got engaged and used his platform to make a difference. Because of the protest that that brother has led, he has encouraged others, 
other celebrities to speak out on police brutality, to generate a discussion about the, the injustice that exists in this country. Here we are singing about land of the free and home of the brave, why these police continue to treat us like slaves, why these police still act like modern day slave catchers, why these police feel it like they are judge, jury, and executioner. We saw what happened to the brother Walter Scott, shot that brother in the back and pretended like it didn't happen and made up some weak, lying story about what happened. We saw what happened to the brother Eric Garner, choked to death on camera. Five years later, the killer, the murderer, is still walking around the streets free today. Five years later, no charges against that police officer. Five years later, and that police officer has people actually raising thousands upon thousands of dollars to support that police officer. And they want to tell us about a few bad apples. When you got the police union speaking out on his behalf, speaking out in support of him, raising money for him. That proves that this is not some problem of a few bad apples. It's a problem with a system that's rotten to the core. That's the problem. And, you know, it's, it's great to have people speaking out on issues. It's great that you have a Colin Kaepernick raising his voice about these important issues when he could be like 99% of these other celebrities who couldn't give a damn. You know, some of them have told you we're out there, their own mouths, they don't care about none of that stuff. They've talked to these, these rap artists that these kids idolize. And these artists told them straight to their face, they don't care nothing about that. They don't want to hear nothing about no Black Lives Matter. But this brother risked it all, put his, whole, his career on the line to make a point about police brutality. But yet and still, you got these shucking and jiving Negroes like this, this sports announcer throwing this brother under the bus. These same people probably would have threw Rosa Parks under the bus. They probably would have complained about her not getting in line and just getting to the back of the bus or giving up her seat to some white man. They would probably complain about uh, Martin Luther King causing protests and they would say he's a troublemaker. These are the Negroes. These are the same Negroes. These Negroes that talk about how you know, people shouldn't be boycotting. These same Negroes would be saying we shouldn't be boycotting against them, you know, in support of um, the boycott against the uh, Montgomery uh, bus company. They would be saying that. They would be happy to get in the back of the bus and be a good little Negro boy for Mr. Charlie. They would be happy to do that instead of standing up for justice. See, that's how they do, man. They always get these black tokens, these black Negro pieces, uh, mouthpieces, black Negro mouthpieces of white supremacy. They get them out there. They trot them out there, trot them out front to put a black face on the oppression of a black brother. You know, and people want to talk about all the great things that Jay-Z did, um, and all that kind of stuff. And those are great things. But we got to understand that people who sell out are people that at first were on the right track. They were doing the right things. But at some point, they become compromised. At some point, they decide to abandon what principles they claim to have believed in. Have we forgotten that Judas was one of the disciples? One of the, the righteous men? In the company of, um, of Jesus, peace be upon him. But they offered him a few pieces of, of silver, a few pieces of gold, and he sold Jesus out. Just like Jay-Z took a few pieces of silver and a few pieces of gold and sold out to brother Colin Kaepernick. There would be no discussion about some social justice programs in the NFL if it wasn't for the brother Colin Kaepernick. And we all know this. 
But yet and still, this brother going to say we're beyond kneeling. We're beyond that kind of stuff. And you got this this sports announcer saying that he wasn't behind it from the, the beginning. He wasn't in support of it from the beginning. That's even worse than being in the position of Jay-Z. At least Jay-Z initially supported Colin Kaepernick. Initially wore Colin Kaepernick's jersey. How can some black man not stand with Colin Kaepernick when he's speaking out on an issue that's vital to our community? On an issue that directly affects the lives of black men? I saw some report that basically talked about how police brutality is a leading cause of death among black men. We are disproportionately targeted and killed by these police. And most of the time, no charges are filed against these police. Most of the time when there's an investigation, they always let these police off. Most of the time, even when it goes to trial, the police walk. In the face of that injustice, somebody has to stand up. Somebody has to speak out. And that's what that brother Colin Kaepernick did. And it's a damn shame that he's being persecuted by his own people. Persecuted by his own people. Just like Jesus was persecuted by his own people. He came to, to speak to the Jews. To, to give the, get them back on track and stuff. Get them back into righteousness. And it, were, it was Jews who went to the Romans to ask them to kill that, to, to crucify that brother. But anyway, man, y'all get the point, man. Tell me what y'all think about this, man. I will post a link to the video of this, this Uncle Ruck is going in on Colin Kaepernick, and I want to hear what y'all have to say about it. So with that, please rate, comment, subscribe, like the video, share the video, tell me what you think. Again, I'm sorry about the technical difficulties. I would have enjoyed to do this live, but, you know, it kept buffering and all that kind of stuff. I don't know what that's about. So with that, peace and blessings to each and every one of you. Um, tell me what you think. Peace.